I want to address this whole idea of the, quote, division between moral law and ceremonial law that people use as a straw man to say, oh, well, see, the Sabbath was done away with, the Holy Days were done away with. Those are all ceremonies that we don't keep any longer because, oh, Yeshua fulfilled them. You sure he did, but he, why did he, why did he say, uh, when he, with the Passover, do this in remembrance of me? This is a, they use this division of ceremonial and moral laws to say, oh, well, see, we don't have to keep the, the, the Sabbath and Holy Days. Those are ceremonial laws. They, we don't have to eat clean meat, only clean meats, because that's a ceremonial law. That's what people are using this stuff for. And it's a straw man argument. They're building up a false, false argument to, to destroy it. They're using a fallacy of logic to prove their, to try to prove their point. And we read in Leviticus 23, very specifically, verse 1, The Lord spoke again to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, The Lord's appointed times which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed times are these. For six days you may work be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall not shall not do any work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the appointed times of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall, shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. So, you know, you see these things. Uh, that they, they, uh, that these are feast of Yahweh. These are not feast of the Jews. These are feast of Yahweh. These are his appointed times. He's saying, this is when you show up. He says at one point, three times, and I believe it's Numbers, uh, Numbers 29, or I guess, I believe it's Deuteronomy 16 where the the holy days are, are mentioned. Deuteronomy 16, which is your second witness. By two or three witnesses, everything shall be established. Yeah, it says, you should, uh, in 16 it talks about the, and you should, verse 9 it says, And you shall count seven weeks for yourself. You shall begin a count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. Then you shall celebrate the feast of weeks to the Lord your God with a tribute of free, free will offering of your, of your hand, which you shall give just as to the Lord your God. Uh, so, you know, you have that where there are they're, they're seven, seven, seven weeks, seven weeks, 50 days, which has to make the count start on a Sunday, not like the original thing. And why is that important? Because Yeshua rose at the end of the Sabbath day, and remember the days begin and end at, at sunset. You can read that in Genesis. There was evening and there was morning. Uh, so you've got Deuteronomy 16 that talks about the holy days, but let's go, let's refer back to Genesis 2 about the Sabbath. Uh, 
starting in verse 2. Genesis 2, verse 2. By the seventh day God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. What is sanctified? Set apart. Because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made earth and heaven. But you read over and over, like here's about the sixth day, you, uh, Genesis 1, verse 31, it says, God saw that he had, all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. There was, and then verse uh, 23, there was evening, and there was morning, fifth day. And then... There was, uh, in verse 8, it says, And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And then, he made, and then, verse 13, There was evening and there was morning, a third day. So, every single day, that shows they were, begin and end, at sunset, Shabbat is from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. Very clear. And this is from Genesis. You can't get any further back in the Bible than that. Which, which is far before the, the nation of Israel and the promised Abraham. The Sabbath goes way, way back. And people will say that, oh, well, the all this was done away with and there's a division between ceremonial and and uh, and ceremonial and, and moral law that's their straw man to get rid of the thing and let's look at this real quick uh, Genesis 26 verse 5 it says because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge my commandments and my statutes and my laws so Isaac lived and and then it goes on to talk about Isaac but it says right there that Abraham kept <coughs> Abraham kept the commandments and the statutes they didn't just suddenly appear at Sinai that's when they were first written down but that's not when they first started to exist You know, and you read about circumcision, but it's about the circumcision of the heart. That's what, what the covenant with uh, believers. But then you read, you read in Genesis chapter seven, verse two: "You shall take with you from every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female, and the animals that are not clean." Two, a male and his female. So, right there, you're defining clean and unclean animals. He, how could he, how could he instruct Noah about clean and unclean animals if they didn't already know that? That that was there. That that was intended. How did, how did, Noah obviously knew what clean and unclean animals was. And this is far before Israel. This is far before Sinai. And by the way, when, what happened first? Passover. You had Passover, and then you had you had Passover first, where they were delivered from Egypt, and then they received the law, the Torah. Afterwards, they received the law, the instructions to live by. Afterwards. Why did they wander in the wilderness for 40 years? Because they, it, he was like, he was trying to see if they would keep his, his word. Yeshua wasn't doing away with the Sabbath. 
he was breaking the traditions of men, just like you read about in uh, Mark seven, where it says, "Why do you break the Why do you break the traditions of the elders?" And let's read in Acts. Let's go to Acts. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then the day of Pentecost had come. They were all together in one place. And suddenly that there came, a, and we can read about that, and they were spirit-filled, and they had tongues, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's why they were gathered on the first day of the week. And then, uh, you know, in uh, Acts 1, verse 12, it says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which was near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. Why is they talking about Sabbath day if it was done away with? So, just... Hopefully this is food for thought, and I will talk about the Sabbath again in another video. Shalom, shalom.